G'day GDR people, Bruce here, Barking Dog Bim. Model view options. Now these are a bit of a secret source when it comes to enhancing the usefulness of your GDL objects. It makes them go from being useful to super useful. So if you have the same object that needs to appear in multiple documentation sets and it needs to display differently in two or more of those sets, the model view options are your friend. It enables you to tie together your documentation so that it's consistent, comprehensive, and accurate across all your packs because you've got the same object showing as it needs to in those different packs, be it site plans, floor plans, concrete plans, or whatever. So let me show you how to use model view options in your GDL objects. Model view options allow you to control the sub element visibility and display status of objects and other native ARCHICAD elements. So, what does that mean? So, I've got a few things placed in the model. I've got a beam, column, a couple of slabs, a door, a lamp, and a cabinet. Just the standard Graphisoft cabinet object. And if I have a look at those in 3D, here they are. Beam, column, couple of slabs, door, lamp, and cabinet. So at the moment, this is how they're displaying. The beam is a dashed axis line, column as you see it. The two slabs are showing separately. The door is very pared down with its detail level. The lamp is a circle and the cabinet as you see it. Now I can turn off the visibility of these objects by turning off their layer. So I can select it and turn off their layer. And this toolbar down here is my quick layers toolbar. I just have it docked down the bottom here. And if you want to know how to get it, that's window, palettes, quick layers. So I can control the overall visibility of my objects with the layers, I can just turn off the layer, as you can see, turn off the layer. And I can also control how it displays to an extent using the graphic overrides, which is a great tool as well. But that controls the visibility or the display of the entire object. If I want to change elements within that object itself, sub elements, so be it the tap, the crosshair, the axis line, what have you, that's where model view options are used. Now your model view options are located on your quick combinations toolbar down the bottom. And I've set up three model view options as shown here. So if I flick to the next one, pay attention to how these objects change that display. The beam has gone from an axis line to a full outline. Column has stayed the same. The separating line between the slabs has disappeared. A bit more detail in the door. The lamp has changed its floor plan display. And there's a bit more detail in the cabinet. Now, if I go to detailed, it's changed again. I've got both the axis line and the outlines on the beam. I've got my crosshairs showing on my column. Dashed line between my slabs. Full detail plus a marker on my door. The floor plan display of the lamp has changed again, and even more detail is showing in my cabinet. And if I go to 3D and go through the same process, you can see mainly just with the door, the lamp, and the cabinet how that changes, like so. So that's what model view options do. And you access your model view options by either clicking on this button down here or by going to Document, Model View, Model View Options. And that will bring up your Model View Options palette. So under our Model View Options, we have various tabs, which contain within them the control over various elements. So under your Construction Element Options, you've got your column, beam, slab. I can choose to eliminate the line, use hidden lines. 
I can hide the marker of the door, I can hide the entire door, so on. Your curtain wall options tab controls the visibility of your various sub elements within a curtain wall. Stair options, you can control the detail level on off of the various sub elements. Same with your railing options, full simplified schematic and on off. You would be familiar with these. There's a couple here that you probably don't have. They've been added in by Central Innovation Tools. Now the two that you will be most interested in, in the scripting of your objects, uh, detail level of door, window and skylight symbols, and miscellaneous settings for library parts. Detail level of your doors. As I flick through my options I've set up here, you can see this detail level has changed. 3D and section elevation detail level also will change. You control various sub elements of your doors and windows also under miscellaneous settings on the right here. So your swing and opening lines, and you've got other control options on the left here. What we'll concentrate on for this tutorial is the object and lamp detail level floor plan. So at the moment it's set to full. If I go through schematic, low, medium. And of course I can update my model view options should I wish to change them. Now objects are able to change their display status by querying the parameter status of each model view option and how you've set it up. So each of these tabs is a GDL object that is sitting in your project. Unlike other GDL objects, such as what I've got placed here, door, lamp, cabinet, or whatever else you might have placed, these don't sit in your model. They sit in your model's database in the background. And each model view option that you create here places a new instance of each of these tabs, so each of these GDL objects in your project's database. So as such, each of these tabs has a series of parameters that an object queries to find out its status so that it can then run its necessary subroutines to display how it's meant to. So just like elements placed in your model, if I was to copy this cabinet, change a couple of settings, the changes I have made to this cabinet have not made any changes to this cabinet because they're separate instances. It's the same with your model view options. Any changes I make to this object in this combination will not affect the changes I make to this one. So if I'm going to query parameters in these model view options, how do I find out the parameter names in order to do it? And what command do I use to query those parameters? So the library part names of these two tabs, this one is LG DW Sim Settings, and this one is Library Globals 13. So let's open those. I can come up here to my tab and go open object. I can use the shortcut that comes up on the tooltip there, or I can go file, libraries and objects, open object. And if you navigate to Archicad library, object library, macros, base macros, library globals. And there's one, LG DW symbol settings, and the other one, library globals 13. So I can open it that way, but you need to know where they're located. You may not know, you may forget, it may be too hard. So let's do it the other way, which I prefer because it's a lot easier. If I have a script window open, I can type in the name of the object I want to open, highlight that name, and then click on open or use the shortcut or again, the menu. So I'll just use the shortcut. And what that does is that finds this object in your library and opens it. 
has to be loaded in your library, but that way you don't have to navigate your way through all of the folder structure to find it. We'll go to the interface, we'll preview that interface, and we can see that yes, this is the part we're after. And you can also see that it's just a GDL object, that its subtype is set to library global settings. So once its subtype is set to library global settings, it won't be selectable based on the floor plan. It will appear in that model view options list. Now, the hardest part of querying a Graphisoft MVO is knowing which parameter to query. Because if you look at the parameter list, they can be quite extensive and it's hard to know exactly which one you're after and what they do. So the way I go about finding it is I go to the interface, preview that interface, and then I look for some text around the parameter that I want to use. So in this case, we are looking at the floor plan. So we've got here object and lamp detail level. So let's search for that. Control F to bring up our search, object and lamp. Okay, so that's found this text down here, which is an outfield. And an outfield just displays text in your interface. Let's bring up our interface. Object and lamp detail level. We've got floor plan. Or we can see we've got another outfield here called floor plan. And then we've got an infield. And an infield will put a parameter into your interface. And that parameter name is I debt level MVO 2D. So let's select that, copy that to the clipboard. Go to our parameters, paste it in here, and there it is, I debt level MVO2D. We'll just check that that is what we're after, full, medium, low, full, medium, low. Yes, so that is the parameter we need, I debt level MVO2D. So that is the parameter we want to query. How do we query it? I'll just shift this up here. So we use the statement library global. Let's have a look at our help. Now the help can be found under help online resources GDL reference guide for your PDF version. You can view that online or download it and view it in a PDF viewer of your choice. Or well, the online version can be found at gdl.graphisoft.com and click on reference guide. Library globals is under expressions and functions, functions, and it's about halfway down. Library global. And so the command is library global. The object name is the name of the MVO you're querying. Parameter is the parameter name you're after, and the value is the returned value from that parameter that comes back to you. However, this is not quite the correct syntax. The correct syntax is down here, and it is success equals library global, blah, blah, blah. Now, success is just a made up variable name. It doesn't have to be success, it could be anything you want. But what that does is that statement line there will return a one if it's successful or a zero if it is not. Why are we doing that? This command library global will run off, look for this object, this library global object and this parameter. If for some reason it can't find either of those two, the statement will fail. If you don't handle that in your subsequent script, you will get errors in your objects that you're scripting and it will cause a problem. Of course, it will cause a problem. So the way you error handle it is something along the lines of if this query is successful, so if it's greater than zero, then we'll do our statement, whatever it will be that we are depending on if it's successful. Otherwise, we'll error handle it in some other way. Okay, so let's put that into our script. As I said, it doesn't have to be success. It could be any made up variable name, but it is good scripting practice to use the same variables that Graphisoft use whenever possible. 
just to, for consistency of understanding of what's going on. So the object name will be this. The parameter name is this. And the returned value, I'll just put in my own variable, requested detail level 2D. Let's get rid of this so we don't get an error message. And now we'll show a text 2 for that. So let's have a look at our 2D view. And we have returned successfully a number, which is a bit meaningless, but we know it's working. So I'll save this object. Now you remember to save it to an external location, not an embedded location, because if you save it to an embedded location and your file crashes, you've lost your work. So I'll just call it BDB MVO test. And it's just a model element. So let's place that in our plan. If I select my object tool, it'll be pre-selected because I've just created it. And there it is, three. Well, what does three mean? Well, let's flick through our MVOs. Schematic, it's changed to a five, all right. It's changed to a four, it's changed to a three. Excellent, so what that is doing is that's querying this parameter and returning its status, which happens to be a number. And if we have a look at the parameter here, we see that it's an integer. So even though we are getting text here, the actual value is a number because Archicad is switching out the text for a number because in the parameter script, they're using a values to statement. So this is how you find out what those values are. <laughs> it's a little bit convoluted. It's incredibly painful to try and figure this out, which is why I'm telling you what it is. So they've got constants, that level 2D detailed, simple and draft. These will be defined in the master script. So if we go to the master script and search for this, here we go. We can see that detailed has a value of three. Simple has a value of four and draft has a value of five. And that's what we are seeing represented here. Simple has a level of five or schematic or draft, would they say? So draft is five, simple is four, detail is three. Draft is five, simple is four, detailed is three. So let's make better use of that in our object. I'll just move this to a clear space and I'll show you how you can better utilize that. Now, now we know how to query our MVO. How do we now utilize that in our object? So what we'll do is we'll create a parameter. That parameter name will be i.level2d. So that's the name that Graphisoft use in their parts. So it's a good idea we use the same. It can be anything. But as I said, good scripting practice is to use the same names. We'll make it an integer, we'll call it 2D detail level, and we'll set up our master script to contain the values we're going to use in this selection list. I'll copy in my header and my footer. I'll set up my constants. So detailed was three, simple was four, draft was five. And we are also going to have a selection that says by MVO. So let's have a look at how the Graphisoft objects do it. We go to our 2D representation. They have a 2D detail level here. And their selections are by MVO, full, medium, and low. They also have a corresponding 3D representation. By MVO, full, simplified, schematic. And they also have an off option. And if it's by MVO, it will respond to the MVO as we've seen. And if you override that and set it to something else, it will not respond to the MVO. So if I now change this, this one stays as I've set it because I've overridden that. So we want that same behavior in our object. So 2D won't have an off. We'll only set up the 2D for this object. Now I've covered this in a couple of different videos before on how to set up your selection list. So I've created a couple of arrays here, put in a temporary counter, 
and then set up two arrays, one with the constants I've got here, one with the descriptions. And now in my parameter script, I'll set up my values to command, values to i detail level 2D of that. And I will use the index array first and the description array second. And that allows me to set up my selection list here. So now we have our selection list set up. Let's query our MVO. So that's the statement. Success, library global, library global 13. We are querying that parameter, returning the information in this variable here. But what I am going to do in my 2D script, and if you're doing a 3D object, you do it in your 3D script, is I'm going to test the value of that parameter in my scripts and then go off to different subroutines depending on what that value is. So what I will do at the front here is I'll put in an if statement. So if this parameter is equal to MVO, so if it's got by MVO selected, then we need to find out what the MVO is, right? So then we'll run this library global. If it's successful, then we will change the value of the parameter to whatever gets returned. Now, because I haven't used parameters in here, parameters statement, like so, the parameter will stay at whatever the user has selected. It will only change the value of this idet level 2D for the subsequent scripts. So parameter, 2D and 3D scripts. So I've done a video on that as well, if you wanna delve into that a little bit more. And that is in the order of script execution video three. Leave a link down below. And also should be a link up there. And we'll close off our if statement. So as the script comes down here, I detail level 2D will be whatever is set here. So if I set that to full, it'll skip over this and continue running the script with the parameter value set to full. Same as if I set it to medium or low. If I have it set to by MVO, it will have the value of by MVO, which is two. It'll come down to here, it'll drop into here. It'll run this query. And if it's successful, then it will set I debt level 2D to whatever the query returns, which will be three, four, or five. So there's a bit of a hole in my logic. What if that query fails? I will have my I debt level 2D set to two, which I don't want. I want it set to three, four, or five. So what I just need in here is another line of code. This is my error handling line of code. So what I do now is I set it to the detail level I want in case this library global doesn't work. So there you go, that's the complete if statement. That is another way to error handle this library global query. Now that we've done this, we've queried our library global, we've got our result, what do we do with it? All right, let's go back to our 2D script. We'll get rid of this because we've already put that in our master script. And I'll just neaten this up a bit with some comments. And we now want this to be our I debt level 2D. Let's save that. So at the moment, nothing will have changed. What I've done is I've just fleshed out the robustness of the logic of our scripts, made it tidier, but the end result will still be the same. Five, four, and three. What we want to do is we want to add our subroutines. And they will look like that. So if our detail level is detailed, we'll go sub to detailed. Simple to simple, draft to draft and I'll place my subroutines after my end statement. Otherwise, the script will just keep on running down and try and run those subroutines. And here they are, detailed. Now the colon on the end turns this into a label which a GoSub can recognize. And so what we'll do, if it's detailed, we'll come down to here. We'll put in another text to statement, but further along in the Y, we'll say full. 
simple will say medium, draft will say low. Now, I don't know why Graphisoft have chosen to have full, medium, and low as the descriptions, but in the script itself, call it detailed, simple, and draft. A bit confusing, but it is what it is. So detailed, we will draw a circle with a poly2 underscore statement and a circle with two coordinate lines, drawing the center, defining that with a 900 status code, then drawing the full arc with 360 degrees and a status code of 4001. If it's simple, we'll draw an octagon with eight coordinate lines. And if it's draft, we'll just draw a square. So let's save that. Right, that's a bit close. Let's just shift it across a bit. So our detail level of three is full, it's a circle. Detail level of four, medium, it's an octagon. And detail level of five is low, is a square. Same object, same object displaying differently in different views. So one of the projects I worked on was a big hospital project. And what we would do is in the floor plans, we would show the plumbing fixtures. So a vanity basin, a toilet, a spa. And then on the concrete plans, those would be hidden and the penetration through the slab would be shown instead. So that way, if the toilet got moved, the penetration would move with it. So that is an example of how you can use it in your projects. But I'm sure that you can think of many different examples of how you can use this sort of scripting for the objects you want in your projects and for your office. So that's how you deal with it. You set up your selection list, the 2D or 3D. You can just copy that code. That'll work for you. It'll be the same code across all the objects. It matches the Graphisoft code. You just set up your selection list. You do your query. And then in your 2D or your 3D script, you handle what to do with that query in subroutines. You can even create your own company's model view options. As I showed you at the beginning, I've set up my own model view options. Just set up one for your company, don't set up multiple. If you end up requiring more space, you do additional pages. So I've got additional pages here under general site, cabinets, cinemas, cinema objects that one I've created. And you do that by just changing the subtype of the object to a library global settings, which is documentation element, library global settings, and it will appear in that list. Now you do have to create an interface for your MVO. You can't access the parameters list the way you do in standard objects. For example, this object here, I don't have to create a interface. I can access the parameter list through here. But with a library global, with an MVO, you do have to create an interface. And I've done a few videos on creating your own interface. Same principles apply. I'll leave those links in the description too. Those are episodes 12 to 17. Now, before I go, I just had to correct some dodginess I put into my script. Instead of hard coding the text offset in each and every instance, I've just created a variable at the top here, multiplied my value by the global scale. So that way, if I change the distance between my number and my text, it changes in every case. And also, if I change my scale, the offset between the number and the text remains the same. I just I couldn't let that dodginess get out there. All right. So there you have it. Now you know how to query model view options. You know how to make use of it in your objects to make them super useful. And you know how to create a model view option for yourself. So I'll see you in the next one.